I built the world's tiniest bulldozer because I have a problem. My son has been losing everything underneath the couches in our living room. And because these couches are really low to the ground, I either have to move the entire couch to get at what was lost, or grab a broom handle and sweep things out so that I can get it back for my son to continue to play with. And this specific problem got my attention because it actually seemed like the perfect problem to be solved by a tiny little robot. So the idea is we can send this little robot on an under couch mission to find what was lost and push it back out, out from underneath the couch for us. But to do this effectively, I think we're gonna have to design the world's tiniest bulldozer. So to do that, we're gonna need a few components. This tiny microcontroller and camera will serve as the eyes and the brain of our micro bulldozer, along with two tiny geared DC motors, then to make sure that we can see anywhere, we'll add two LEDs, as well as a 3000 milliamp hour battery to power this thing for plenty of time for retrievals and a DC motor controller to power the motors. These components provided the primary constraints for the design, which ended up being this interesting three wheel design. So I only had to use two motors to actually drive this system. After 3D printing the components, I could then remove the support and see how everything fit together. I tried to design this tiny little bulldozer in such a way where I wouldn't need any hardware to connect the two body pieces here. Then I could start to wire up all the electronics that would allow me to test the system before assembling everything. I tried to make sure that I could arrange all the components in such a way where it was still super compact and low profile without being too hard to assemble. Here you can actually see how I leveraged this little circuit board to actually act as a mount for the headlights that would then fit into these little reflectors to focus the beams to maximize their effectiveness in dark spaces. Now that we had everything connected, we could design a program that serves a simple web page using our microcontroller to test the motors and make sure that commands are going effectively from our web page to the actual physical system. It can be really enticing to want to just jump straight to the final software design, but trust me, building these little test interfaces will pay huge dividends for your own sanity when you're debugging these things. Now that everything seemed to be working well, I could finally get to assembly, where I could first put in the battery and then mount the circuit board on top on some little standoffs, along with the little reflectors for the headlights. Generally, everything could just snap into place, but a little bit of hot glue always helps as well. Honestly, one of the hardest parts of this entire assembly was just making sure that all the wires were managed easily because they took up the bulk of the space with this entire design. Now, I had this kind of low profile but kind of long USB-C cable that I could use to extend the USB-C port of the microcontroller to make this thing easy to program and charge when I needed to without needing to disassemble the entire thing. I could then pop in a bearing to the rear wheel because this thing will just be acting as a stabilizer and not need to be powered. For the front wheel assemblies, I had a few old O-rings lying around that I could actually use as the tires here for more grip on hard surfaces. I was able to just roll each O-ring into one of two slots on each wheel, allowing for a little bit more surface contact, adding to the stability of each of these wheels. Once the wheels were all connected, I could actually test the software that I updated where I just have one slider on each side of the video feed that allows me to have this sort of tank control for the overall robot. One thing I noticed immediately though is that I made a dumb mistake and when I press forward on the left slider, it moved the motor in reverse. A little bit of coding later and I finally had it fixed and I could finish the assembly of the system. I could just pop on the top cap and then use these two little clips to hold the top and bottom pieces together to ensure I didn't need any hardware. These little clips would also act as the mounting point for the front dozer blade when I went to attach that here. This could just be attached using two self-tapping screws. And just like that, our tiny micro bulldozer assembly is complete. Time to test this thing out. All right, let's give this little robot an easy first test. I'm going to pretend like I lost my AirPods case underneath my couch in my workshop, and let's see how this thing can retrieve it. 
What's really cool about this design is that those little fins on either side of the blade catch items as you go to retrieve them from underneath objects so that it's really easy to move things around without needing to be too precise. This little fake potted plant is actually a really good example of how these work because while this item is pretty big and bulky for this little robot, the little fins on either side of the dozer blade help to manipulate the object really easily. Now bear in mind, this thing is not going to win any speed awards, but for my use case, that's totally fine. What's important is that this thing is tiny and can fit under most objects that would make it really hard to retrieve otherwise. Let's actually test this on one of the hardest ones we have, which is our pretty low profile couch here. We can send our little micro bulldozer off into the abyss and see how it performs. And I'm not gonna lie, these little LED headlights were surprisingly effective to navigate dark spaces. The only downside of this design is sometimes you don't know exactly how wide you are and you have to readjust to make it through little objects like this. Here you can see just how low def the actual video stream is, but for my use cases, this was actually fine considering the overall setup of the microcontroller and camera was only about 20 bucks. This test was kind of interesting because the previous tests were kind of small objects and this was actually a relatively large object to retrieve with this little robot, but it still did just fine. My son was always very polite and thanked the little robot every time it retrieved something for him. You'll notice too, the upper case of the robot is actually getting in the way of the camera feed, but I'll be completely honest, I was just a little bit too lazy to fix it without wanting to test it first. This thing was just too much fun to pilot around. Now, I absolutely love building these little projects, but even more enjoyable was to see my son's reaction and enjoyment in seeing this thing roll around. All right, so that's gonna do it for our micro bulldozer build. I really hope you enjoyed. And if you did find this video entertaining or interesting, consider liking and subscribing to the channel because it takes a ton of effort to even do little projects like this, but it's so worth it because I get a blast out of it and it's so much fun to see the ideas that it creates with a community here. So let this be a reminder to think about the problems in your own life and come up with an interesting creative solution to it yourself. Because I think these days we could all use a little bit more human-based creativity going on. So until the next build, I'll see you later.